Uh, hello, everyone. Today is our sixth and last Zoom session in the course Philosophy and the Baha'i Faith. Today, we are going to talk about uh, uh, the manifestations of God and human history. Uh, various cultures espouse diverse views on natural and human history. But uh, philosophically speaking, those approaches are reduced to two basic ideas, those of a cycle and a straight line. Most ancient cultures regard time and human history, which evolves in time, as cyclical or cyclical. The ring or a snake eating its own tail uh, serve as a symbol of such understanding of history that has neither beginning nor end, but only the eternal return. The Bible, which also comes down to us from antiquity, introduces an entirely different perspective on the evolution of the world and humanity. It posits the so-called alpha point, or the point of the beginning, um, the creation ex nihilo, and describes humanity as moving irreversibly to the omega point, or the last judgment, the apocalypse. The biblical idea of history as a straight line, a straight line was inherited by modern secular culture, which replaced the apocalypse with various utopian visions and became driven by the notion of linear progress with its optimistic slogan, the latest, the greatest. The Baha'i teachings accommodate both uh, cyclical and linear approaches to human history, but move significantly beyond this dichotomy and present a more complex and nuanced picture of it. To begin with, Baha'is believe in the divine origin and driving force behind human evolution, which is striving towards a certain goal that is preordained by God and is uh, present potentially even before the appearance of human species on the earthly globe. According to the Baha'i views about Darwin's theory of evolution, uh, it is true only in regard to the material constitution of humanity, which shares common ancestry with all living creatures. As for the spiritual essence of humans or their eternal soul, it is fundamentally different from the spirit that animates the animal kingdom. No matter how far the animal may evolve spiritually, it can never produce a new human species. As Abdul Baha puts it, I quote, just as man progresses, evolves, and is transformed from one form and appearance to another, in the womb of the mother, while remaining from the beginning a human embryo, so too has man remained a distinct essence, that is the human species, from the beginning of his formation in the matrix of the world, and has passed gradually from form to form. This is a quotation from some answered questions. Uh, the difference between evolution and history is that the former follows the inner laws of nature, while the latter is driven by the outside forces of revelation. In the proper sense of the term, history is the result of the interaction between the divine call and the human response. According to the Baha'i teachings, human history is cyclical and depends on the appearances of divine manifestations. Abdul Baha says in this respect, I quote, each of the manifestations of God has a cycle wherein his religion and his law are in full force and effect. When his cycle is ended through the advent of a new manifestation, a new cycle begins. Thus, cycles are inaugurated, concluded, and renewed until a universal cycle is completed." End quote. What Abdul Baha calls a universal cycle may run for thousands or even millions of years, and it, I quote, comprises countless ages and epochs. As Abdu'l-Baha concludes, we are in the cycle which began with Adam and whose universal manifestation is Baha'u'llah, end quote. Mm -hmm. 
The Baha'i concept of a cycle, however, does not presuppose the return to what has been before, namely uh, to its starting point. Since creation is never ending, so is spiritual progress. And each cycle is moving humanity forward and upward to new heights and accomplishments. Hence, the overall Baha'i vision of history could be seen as fourfold. Human history is divine in origin. It has a purpose. It consists of, uh, of upward spiral cycles, and it will last forever. Baha'is view the present historical period as the age of transition uh, during which humanity is moving from the stage of uh, societal infancy towards its collective maturity. It is characterized by the unceasing struggle between uh, what Shoghi Effendi identified as the forces of integration and the forces of disintegration. Uh, and here is the quotation uh, from Shoghi Effendi. A twofold process can be distinguished, each tending in its own way and uh, with an accelerated momentum to bring to a climax, climax the forces that are transforming the face of our planet. The first is essentially an integrating process, while the second is fundamentally disruptive. The former, as it steadily evolves, unfolds a system which may well serve as a pattern for that world polity towards which uh, a strangely disordered world is continually advancing. While the latter, as its disintegrating influence deepens, uh, tends to uh, tear down with increasing violence the antiquated barriers that seek to block humanity's progress towards its destined goal. This is a quotation from the World Order of Baha'u'llah. Now let's talk about uh, divine manifestations and um, that um, part of philosophy that deals with um, the way humans are connected with the divine is called prophetology. Prophetology is perhaps uh, the most important part of any scriptural philosophy because it aims to explain the special status of scriptural texts in a given religion. The main question of prophetology is how can revelation or other forms of communication between the creator and his creation be possible? There are three most common answers to this question by the faithful. Buddhists focus on the human aspect of the founder of their religion, the Buddha, a natural but extraordinary human being who was able to achieve spiritual enlightenment. Muslims emphasize the intermediary role of the Prophet Muhammad between Allah and his people. Christians assert the divinity of Jesus Christ as the perfect mediator between God and humanity. Here, as elsewhere, the Baha'i writings aim at reconciling those three approaches by shedding a new light on the subject. According to the Baha'i teachings, the founders of great and independent religions, or manifestations of God, as Baha'is call them, have three stations. Uh, I quote, the first is the material station, the second is the human station, which is that of the rational soul, and the third is that of divine manifestation and heavenly splendor. Uh, this is from some answered questions. Uh, as Abdul Baha'i explains, I quote, the material station has an origin in time, for it is composed of the elements and every composition must ultimately be decomposed. End quote. In this sense, the prophets are like all other human beings. Abdul Baha continues. The second station is that of the rational soul, which is the human reality. This is also has a beginning, and the manifestations of God share it in common with all humanity. End quote. Their souls, however, are unique in that they are capable of reflecting the revelation from God. While the souls of most human beings emanate from the Holy Spirit, the souls of the chosen ones appear through the process of manifestation. Abdul Baha explains, um, I quote, the manifestational procession as the manifestation of the reality of a thing 
in other forms, like the procession of the tree of the tree or the flower from the seeds. Uh, for it is the seed itself that has become manifested in the form of the branches, leaves, and flowers." End quote. In that sense, the divine manifestations are perfect mediators between uh, the Creator and His creatures. Finally, as Abdu'l-Bahá concludes, I quote, the third station is that of divine manifestation and heavenly splendor, which is the word of God, the everlasting grace, and the Holy Spirit. This station has neither beginning nor end, end quote. And in that sense, the manifestation could be likened to God himself. While manifestations of God vary in their physical bodies and individual souls, they are one and the same in regard to their divine missions, uh, differing only, I quote, in the intensity of the revelation and the comparative potency of their light. Uh, this is the quotation from Baha'u'llah. Divine educators teach the same spiritual truths, but the social aspects of the religions they initiate uh, vary depending upon the target audience. Also, after many centuries, misinterpretations of their teachings accumulate to the extent that religions that share the same origin and message may become contradictory and take positions opposite to each other. Despite those contradictions and seeming incompatibility, Baha'is believe in progressive revelation, the view that the manifestations of God and the religions uh, they founded form a coherent and comprehensive plan that leads humanity to deeper levels of unity, love, and spiritual discovery. The Baha'i faith is unique among world religions in ascribing the status of divine manifestations to such prominent religious figures as Abraham, Moses, Zoroaster, Buddha, Krishna, Jesus, Muhammad, and their own twin prophets, the Bab and Baha'u'llah. The manifestations of God, while not being identical with God himself, are the, the revealers of God's will and as such are beyond any ordinances and prohibitions. Uh, as Abdu'l-Bahá explains, I quote, the manifestations encompass all created things, transcend and discover all existing realities, are cognizant of all things, and therefore their knowledge is divine and not acquired. Uh, this is a quotation from some answered question, questions. It follows that the manifestations of God are endowed with essential infallibility, guarded from error, and I quote, whatsoever proceeds from them is identical with the truth um, and conformable to reality, for they are not under the shadow of the former religion, end quote. And uh, that ends my sixth and last presentation in this course. Uh, now, as always, we open our floor for a general discussion. Thank you for listening.